Ladies and gentlemen, bringing you a little bit of a different video today. The concept for this video came up because I get asked and have even pondered myself sometimes, why would someone buy a 1911 in the year 2021 when a 2011 exists? Same basic principle as a 1911, but more or less double the capacity. And it is a fascinating question and it's a valid one. And it's, I go, look, I, I have my reasons why I love 1911s and, and I will give them to you. And it's my uh, small hope that, hey, maybe this message reaches some people and they go, man, you know what? You got a point. And all the polymer stuff and all the things that I got, it's, it's all cool. And I own all those things too, but there is something about those 1911s. So let's just start with the most obvious argument. Why someone would buy a 2011 over a 1911? Well, of course, the answer to that would be capacity. And it's a very fair argument, but I feel that's virtually the end of the arguments in favor of 2011s. And even in that argument, you have to look at it and go, well, what's the intended purpose of said pistol? Well, if it's a carry gun, you do have to look at it and go, while I would rather have more rounds than less rounds, hey, the statistical average is something to the effect of three rounds per self-defense engagement. So you go, hey, your 17 rounds is nice, but it's statistically very, very unlikely, I mean, almost astronomically unlikely that you would ever be going past, say, eight to 10 rounds in a 1911. So. While I concede the capacity issue, I do think we have to look beyond that. And this was a bit of a fun project because in going through this, I contacted a couple of folks that I know in the 1911 space and um, special shout out. So I, uh, I, I messaged Rob Bianchin over at Cabot who uh, owns Cabot. And for those of you who <clears throat> don't know Rob, he's a He's a very, very classy man, and I don't say that lightly. He is one of those guys when you meet him and you just go, man, that guy's got some, some style and he just kind of gets it. He's got a little bit of old school class, uh, which is a pretty uncommon thing today. And so I sent Rob a message and I said, hey, I would like you to chime in. Why would someone buy a 1911 when 2011s exist? And he wrote me what was a, a poetic, response with all of his points in favor of 1911s. And instead of me trying to come here and recap those points to you, I thought, let me just read some of his points. So Rob's first point was, today we are in a golden era of 1911s. And he says, after 110 years, the industry is producing better 1911s than ever before. The variety and quality of which is available today is unparalleled as compared to any time before. We have reached a pinnacle. And listen to how well this is written. We are in the final act of the attempt at perfection of the 1911. And according to Rob, the fit and finish of the 2011s that they typically see today is just not on par with those of 1911s. But how beautiful and poetic is that line? We are in the final act of the attempt at perfection of the 1911. Now his next point has to do with what he refers to as mechanical purity. And I found this to be such a well-made argument. Rob says, to understand 1911s requires an appreciation of mechanical construction. The 1911 style pistol design requires very precise hand fitting by craftsmen in order to perform with great accuracy and reliability. Modern pistols, such as your big box polymer brands, were designed with modern manufacturing standards in mind where components can be easily mass produced with low cost methods and then simply assembled by virtually anyone and generally speaking, they will work. There's no real craft to it aside from a functionally engineered mechanism. Not all folks appreciate how an object is made. Some will look at a Casio G-Shock digital watch and say it tells them time and very well at that and therefore there's no reason to spend more than $41.95 on a watch. Others appreciate a finely crafted, complex mechanical watch where the art of watchmaking involves highly skilled movements to interface very precisely and with great complexity to function correctly. Both the digital watch and the mechanical watch will tell time. 
but how they get there and the effort and human time and skill in each is distinct. A well-made 1911 is mechanical art in the form of a handgun. The physical beauty of the gun. A design that has looked good for a hundred years will still look good in another hundred years. Elegant flowing lines, artful function, and timeless beauty. It will continue to be valued. The 2011 will be valued by no one in another century. And Rob's point that I found so beautiful, it's the fucking hero weapon. Beyond a firearm, the 1911 is the archetype of handguns, the weapon for the hero, and the American experience of greatness. The hero in literature is the one that adventures off to confront the unknown and returns the victor, and this is the case of the 1911 in its use in World Wars I and II. Earlier generations who fought to preserve American ideals carried and used the 1911 and did it at a time when the handgun was far more relevant in battle than it is today. Light, easy to handle, effective. The handgun is the ideal weapon for both defensive and offensive close quarter man-to-man -man combat fight. We stand on the shoulders of our forefathers and the connection we can still experience is in effect the same weapon that served. When you hold the 1911, you hold the hero's weapon where America prevailed in the confrontation of evil in the Great Wars. It's a tangible connection to our past, which forges the identity of who we are. Now as stated, I've got my own reasons why I still believe that 1911s hold this incredible place for any gun owner. And I know, that, look, I can never win this argument with you based on reason and logic. For me, it's an argument that's far more centered around an emotional argument. See, 1911s for me, it's, it's the gun for people who have a little bit of old school in them. I equate it to, look, two cars can pull up to the stoplight. You might have a new McLaren and a 69 Charger. And as cool as that new McLaren is, you know which car is classier and which one's gonna get infinite more eyeballs. People are gonna take their photo with that 69 Charger. It's the same thing with knives, as I've been getting into knives lately. There's something, while I appreciate the modern mechanical knives that are laser cut and all that jazz, I mean, there's something cool about it, but I'm telling you, the experience of going and participating in forging a knife from nothing, taking blank steel and making it into something, and within that, there's imperfections and there's personality in it. There's something about that that if you don't understand it, I don't know that I can make you understand it. See, for me, when I see 1911s, I just don't see a gun. I see something that is this living, breathing thing. It has a soul. And while it's a physical, tangible object, it's an object that actually moves me. A beautiful 1911. I mean, a real, genuine, beautiful 1911 is way more than a gun. It's a historical statement. And I cannot tell you that once ever in my life, as much as I love firearms, I've ever picked up a polymer weapon and said that's a piece of art and historical art at that. It is simply a tool. A 1911 is a tool that has a history and it has a soul. And if you've never tested that out, go check out a high-end 1911 sometime and tell me it's not the best thing that you ever shoot. God damn, that's well written. You can cut that part out, but God damn, man knows how to write. I was like, Rob, you gotta write a fucking book, man. You know how to write shit.